Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com with the 2018 Bowman Baseball 12 box random team number three hobby version, hobby edition. We comboed up a bunch of teams right here. We took out some teams as well. We took out the uh, Indians, Tigers, Mariners, and Rangers. However, if there's any numbered cards from these teams, we'll collect them into one lot and we'll randomize it to one person with a different dice roll at the end of the break. For this break right here. Big thanks to these folks for getting into the action. There's all the combo teams. As you saw, we'll randomize each list. One and a three, four times. One, two, three, and four. After four times, we got Nancy. Down to Alex. Alright, good night, Arthur. And then four times for the teams. One, two, three, and four. Four times, Padres down to the Twins. All right, Nancy, you're with your last spot mojo star. You have the Padres, Michael G with the Nationals, Jared with the Mets, Mary Lou, Cubs, and my Dodgers. Rex, you got the Cardinals. Oh, Rex is a Cubs guy. He's not going to like that. Alex with the Yankees. Hiller, you got the Diamondbacks-Astros combo. Mark with the Reds. Rex with the Rockies. EA with the White Sox. Nancy. With the Angels. I've heard of some guy on the Angels. That could be pretty good. Tim Haynes with the A's. Bob Bursky with the Giants. Oppo Joe Mojo. Marlins and Pirates for Moody. Bob with the Braves. Tim with the Red Sox. Jerry with the Phillies. Giuseppe with the Rays. John Ryder with the O's. EA with the Royals Brewers combo. Evan with the Blue Jays. And Alex with the Minnesota Twins. Any trades? While people are thinking about trades, let me open up this case and pull out all the all the boxes. So this is once again our last break of the night. This should bring us bring us right to the end of the broadcast. We're gonna use these posters here at the store. It doesn't look like there's any trades or any trade talks. So trade window closed, TCW. <laughs> I know, hey, Giuseppe got nice hits. The, the jealousy is natural. I don't think Mary Lou's in the room right now, Rex. She has the Cubs. It's funny that she usually buys the Cubs, too. All right. Trade window closed, TWC. So on a Thursday, the 26th, 12-box hobby, random team three, Bowman Baseball. Hot off the presses, there is the final list. <coughs> now, as opposed to the jumbo that you just saw, the hobby versions only have one autograph per box. I think they must have different... Hobby exclusive parallels in here too, I have to think, right? Can someone confirm that? That's correct, Team Pro. Just the two base Otanis, non-numbered Otani autographs. That's it. For now. Uh, I, I don't remember what, where they were from, but it was, it was from just one case though. I forget which one. Is there more color parallels in the hobby edition? Asks, says Gabe. All right, yeah, perhaps, I think so. Uh, the Rockies are decent in this, Hiller. Or, uh, Rex, sorry. I was looking at Hiller's name. Um, if you go... Well, actually, Rex, you're probably watching on your phone, right? But look at the 2018 Bowman Baseball Guide that I, that I created for everybody. Uh, Andy's confirming that, yes, it was in PYT2. Pick your team, too. Yeah, it was... It was it was weird, but hey, that's how it goes. Hopefully we'll find more.
right, that case also correct. Boom box is red. That case also had the red hunter green of the reds. I had a nice tweet at Gatsby Tobby then about that today. Yeah, Rex, use use the headphones. Actually, Rex is you should just can you just plug us into the to your store's speakers or something? Just so the whole the whole crew can listen. What's wrong with it? You should do that. Just plug it in right into the sound system. All right, so we'll breeze through these paper. Obviously, the chrome should. Oh yeah, there's a different pattern than the jumbo. Yeah, he's got to have a PA system at work. Just put us on there. Gavin LaValley, 25 out of 75 for the red legs. That'll be for Mark. That card is gold, Mark. Gold, I tell you. So only one, remember, only one autograph per box on this one. So 12 autos total in this, uh, in this break. Atomic Luis Urias, that's also, that's numbered right there, top right hand corner. Out of 150 for the Padres, Nancy with the last spot mojo Padres. We'll obviously see these paper Otanis. And we've got an orange Chance Cisco. Orioles catcher, 6 out of 25. Who's got the O's in this? John Ryder. I always like when the parallel matches the color of the team. Strong. Nice. Oh, might as well sleeve that up too. So there's your one autograph per box, folks. Let's see if there's any, uh, any more numbered parallels that we can pull out of here. Ah, some orange. See that orange? I saw it. And that's Evan White. 15 out of 25. Nice orange. 25. We'll sleeve 25s and under. Top load them right away too. That goes to the Mariners. Mariners? Bueller? Do we not have the Mariners on this list? Why am I not seeing Seattle? Am I losing my mind? We took out the Mariners, so that'll be part of uh, a randomizer. Winner take all on that. All right, box one in the books. <laughs> All right, next box, good luck. Nice out of 25 to randomize to the masses. Good luck, everybody.
think the packaging is a, is a wee bit better in the hobby set. Packs out of these boxes. Good luck, everybody. This is Random Team 3. This is our last break of the night. We've only pulled two Otani autographs just in life for us. We're obviously looking for more. Now, what's great about this year's set, a lot of great prospects to chase in this. So good luck to everyone. Oh, like this dude right here. Orange Brendan McKay. He's also a two-way player, like Otani, although they may shift him over to pitching exclusively, but he, he'll have some opportunities. There you go, 12 out of 25. Giuseppe with that autograph. Nice one, man. <laughs> you know what? I don't know why they wouldn't at this point, Andy. Andy's like, I w he's like, I'm going to the casino tomorrow. Maybe Tops has a uh, Chase the Otani slot machine there. They should. I don't know. I don't see why not. You know, and, and, it, and the whole machine would just be like, ding, 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 and it'd be like, ding, 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 Greg Dightman, ding, you know. Pardino and then Gonzalez, and he'll be like, oh, I don't get anything for those guys. But if it's like, I get another Otani there. We didn't get a third one yet, but then you'd get like an Otani autograph pop out of the bottom of the, I guess they're little tickets now. They should. I don't see why they wouldn't actually, now that I think about it. You go to the casino, you realize how many like random movies and random brands have. I saw a Mike, there's My Cousin Vinny slot machines in uh, in Vegas. Why? I don't know. He's like, is it like the X anniversary of the movie? I don't, I don't think so, but it's there. I mean, I'm sure Tops doesn't want to associate themselves with the uh, with the dreaded G word, but that's kind of what we're doing. Oscar De La Cruz, 63 out of 150, blue chrome for the Cubs, Mary Lou. Reese Hoskins, nice, out of 499, that goes to the Phillies. Jerry with the Phillies. <laughs> Imagine how many Happy Meals McDonald's could sell if they announced they're putting one pack of Bowman in each box with a chance to get Otani. Probably a lot. Or just like a McDonald's brand Otani card, Gabe. Like what about just a McDonald's brand Otani card? You, you don't think that'll sell for like a hundred bucks? <laughs> they don't even have to, they don't even have to work with Bowman. They can just make their own trading card. Just get the name permission, name license permission, just Throw them in there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Rex. Mitchell White out of 250. Clint Frazier. Evan White. All right, next box done.
that box done, this box, here we go. You'll have to excuse Rex, Gabe. 12 years old sometimes. All right, next box. Good luck, everybody. Come on, Joe. Got hands like Amari Cooper right there. What's going on? Thankfully, this is a, a nice rubber mat. It protects the cards. Thir Thirteen. Sorry, Rex. Thirteen. Good luck. That's right, Andy. The out of five sold for $55,000. Hey, it is crazy. That Steven Strasberg Super Fractor back in the day went for a lot. Remember that one time someone paid $100,000 for a, a Pikachu Super Fractor? People do crazy things. Pikachu has a bad season. Value could tank. <laughs> uh, Austin Hayes, 16 out of 25. Bowman scouts top 100. That goes to the O's. That it'll be for John Ryder, number 26. Blake Rutherford, four ninety Being a big name in the hobby. Cotter Kaiboom. Blue Shimmer to 150. Boom. For the Nationals. That'll go to Michael G. Michael Gabai with that one. Otani. Even those paper base cards still carry some value. And Jack Flaherty is your auto out of this box. Redbirds, that goes to Rex. There you go, Rex. Rookie auto, Jack Flaherty. Late first round pick. I think a big prospect for the Cardinals. Mitchell White, Atomic.
Carlos Correa to 499. Uh, no, the Carter Kai Boom was out of 150. Your Jack Flaherty was just a uh, just a base auto. All right, next box. Good luck. Oh, was there? No, I'm pretty sure it wasn't a Charizard, Andy. Um, it, I think you can look it up. It, it was it was like a some special edition Super Fractor Pikachu from the Pokemon card game, and like it sold for like it sold at one point for like a hundred thousand dollars. I think it didn't. I think there was something wrong with the. I think the person backed out of the money and it eventually sold for like seventy or eighty thousand dollars. But initially, it got pushed up to that amount. Um, I mean. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I think so, Gabe. It was a worldwide one of one given to a winner back, yeah, in the late 90s. I think, yeah. It's crazy. So. People do, people do crazy things when it comes to collecting, when it comes to a hobby, when it comes to, it could even be, I mean, a lot of times hobby is often an obsession. If you, if you are obsessed with a certain kind of turn of the, turn of the 18th, 19th century bicycle or something like that, maybe uh, some vintage Indian motorcycle from the 1930s or something is is a uh, is a thing that people chase, you know, and spend ridiculous amounts of. Old vintage bicycle parts can go for thousands of dollars. We just happen to be in this this sort of niche. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like still still waiting to stumble onto a Fabergé egg at a yard sale. See, that would be a great story. I feel like there's got to be a ton of uh, a ton of old money in in the Dallas area. A ton of old old, old money. Andy, there's got to be old old money there. You know, and some some sort of random estate sale, some fancy part of town. Richard Urania out of twenty five. Orange paper for the Blue Jays. That'll go to Evan. You gotta stumble onto a Fabergé egg at some point. Jason Martin out of four ninety nine for the Pirates. That'll go to the combo Marlins Pirates combo that goes to Moody. Otani for Nancy. And Zach Latell for the Twins is your autograph. Alex Carmichael. With Zach. Yeah, a 56 mantle at a yard sale. That'd be nice, right? 50s era mantle at a yard sale. Uh, remember that uh, Remember that family that, that allegedly found all those, like, T206 Honus Wagners pressed in between a book that their great-grandfather used to have and they found it in a basement or something? I think they found other stuff, too. I think there was, an, there was another follow-up story like six months later where they found, where that same family found more stuff.
Gold. Justin Williams, that card is gold. 12 out of 50. Nice. Dennis Santana. Yeah, family that found seven baseball cards worth millions found finds an eighth or something like that. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, and that Stradivarius violin in the corner. All right, next box. I mean, I, I, I wonder if, I didn't, I haven't really heard too much follow-up of that story. I wonder like if they knew what they, I mean, if they knew what they got. I, I suppose they looked at it and they said, oh, this looks pretty old. Should we get it checked out? Or if their knowledge went, I see, I don't know how, how big, uh, you know, baseball fans they were. They were like, oh, yeah, Ty Cobb? You know, Honus Wagner, T206, you know, uh, tobacco cards from back in the day. You know, like, I don't know how savvy they were. Yeah, I remember that. The first seven cards were in a rumpled like paper bag in the in between like some old books or something like that. That could have just very well ended up in the trash. It's crazy. Can you imagine that? You're just you're just like, oh yeah, here's uh here's some old baseball cards that I got from some tobacco packs. I'll just toss them into uh, this paper bag. I'll, I'll take a I'll take a look at them later. You just forget about them for like decades. It's just crazy to think about. Was he not a collector? So he just kind of had them, tossed them into a paper bag, and was like, yeah, all right. See what happens. All right, next box, folks. We're almost, we're actually almost halfway there. We're making decent time. There's Jose Adalas Garcia out of 499. Slide that one over there. Make my chrome pile and paper pile. I save that Otani. Oh, Shed Long is our autograph. There we go. Red Legs. Mark with the Reds. Some positive things being said about Shed Long. Nice autograph there. Let's sleeve these ones up too. Corey Ray, Atomic. Kyle Young to four ninety nine. Goes to the Phillies. <coughs> Wait, you're a 
Michael G. Strasburg to four ninety nine. Goes to the Nats. That'll be for Michael G. Speaking of Michael Gabay. Wow, Michael Gabay is saying that that uh, that he's got some family heirlooms in a bank vault. I didn't realize that your that your uh, that your grandfather is part of the hundred and first. Has uh, they stormed the eagle's nest, and he apparently his grandfather has some a uh, bit of a uh, bit of old Adolf's silverware. That's crazy. There was a great uh, there was a great band of brothers episode. If, if, if you've seen Band of Brothers, if you haven't, well recommended, ladies and gentlemen, Band of Brothers. Um, there's a great episode about that, <laughs> about when five, 101st, I think Easy Company gets a lot of the a lot of the popularity because of Stephen Ambrose's book. But yeah, it was it was the 101st that got up there. Secured that area. Oh, sorry. Knocking the camera over. Getting tired. <laughs> Big Hit Express running out of steam. Are all halfway there though. A little over halfway there. Making decent time. I gotta look that up, Michael. I got that's pretty cool. Crazy to think how um, back in World War II, how how new uh, the airborne infantry was. You know, nowadays it's like you see movies all the time where. Military guys are jumping, jumping out of helicopters and planes and stuff like that, and parachuting, and everyone, everyone does, you know, all the. There's like extreme sports and base jumping and all that sort of stuff, like just jumping out of stuff and landing. You know, like see, we seem to almost take for granted now. Back in the day, back in the day, it seemed like a crazy idea. It's like, okay, you're gonna get in a plane. We're, uh, and you're going to jump out of the plane with like 80 pounds of gear on you behind enemy lines, you know, and then we're going to drop you in there with no support and you, you, you got you to gotta complete your, your mission. All right. Next box. Matt Hall for the Tigers out of one. I don't think Tigers are in this, so this will be part of that randomizer, winner take all. Along with that orange Evan White back there.
Um, <laughs> GCL saying one of his buddies stormed Saddam Hussein's house, got it some bunch of cigars. You got to smoke one. How how was it? Did Saddam Hussein have good had good cigars? Sure, you got nice Cubans. <laughs> Gabe saying, now if it was Otani silverware, how much would that go for? Otani silverware, it would have been like a million dollars. There's Anthony Band. Don't look, Arthur. There's Anthony Band out of 499. He's not even on the Diamondbacks anyway. He didn't want this guy anyway. This goes to Hiller and the Diamondbacks Astros combo spot. Oh, it was a Cuban. Although I suppose we can get those now too, right? Um, the closest I ever got was there was a oh I don't know if it's there anymore. But there's an old uh, there's an old cigar shop in downtown San Diego where this old Cuban guy would sit and just cut and roll cigars and cut tobacco and roll cigars. They were all all hand done. And they're pretty uh they're pretty great. There's orange Kevin Newman, fifteen out of twenty five for the Pirates, Marlins combo, and Moody. Love those orange parallels. Nice jaspy orange. One day I'll be an orange parallel moody. I don't know what that means, but one day. <laughs> All right, second half of the break. Welcome to the second half of the break. About another 35, 40 minutes to go in this one. So this will bring us pretty much right to the end of the broadcast. Thanks everybody. Good luck. No cigars for Michael G. Cigar, cigars are cigars are okay. They they are. It's a very. Uh, it's a leisurely activity, I suppose. Uh, I I don't have I've not had a chance to. Uh, smoke uh, cigars. No, not too much opportunity because I feel like you have to really, can't rush it. Can't rush smoking a cigar. Uh, a, a person with a person smoking a cigar, you look at that person you're like, that is a man with a lot of free time. He's living, living a life of leisure. I go to the sports book in Vegas and I see someone with a cigar. I always think, that is a man of leisure. You know? Man of leisure, just sitting there, smoking a cigar, putting a couple pennies on, on some horses in Boca Raton, Florida. He's the cigar guy. Cigar guy at a Vegas sports book would definitely have like his own like little mini cubicle rented out, you know, with his name on it. Gets his own little TV, drink service, gets whatever game he wants on that little television, whatever horse race he wants. Wager right there. A life of leisure. One day, we should be so lucky, ladies and gentlemen. We should be so lucky to live that life of leisure. All right. And now, back to the break. Thomas Hatch down the hatch out of 125. Devers. That's for the Cubs. That'll go to Mary Lou. Can't 
forget about Otani, Nancy. Every one of those counts, helps. And our autograph is Derek Hall. I'm sure it's Derek. Derek Hall. Yeah, um, TJ, Gabe, Gabe misses you, by the way. Now, TJ usually gets is pretty busy during the baseball season. So he's, he's got all sorts of things going on during the baseball season. That's his busy time. So summer summertime TJ baseball season TJ is is uh, not as common as fall TJ. Is that a Matthew McConaughey doing the voiceover, the pre-draft thing. Sandy Alcantara out of 150. Double O seven out of 150. Josh Lowe, 35 out of 499. I don't think any relation to Derek Lowe. Wander Javier, Atomic, more Papel. Rays with that one, a Giuseppe with the Rays. Joe P was here earlier. Joe P was here earlier. He was he was per usual displeased at something. He was not pleased with the fact that Bowman Picker Team Five is gonna happen tomorrow. Not pleased with that. Not pleased that I did not personally let him know about flawless collegiate football in that mixer. And that, I think that was that. <laughs> I know, the world is all topsy-turvy, isn't it, John? John Goss is saying, uh, GCL is saying, Still can't believe I'm going to have to buy Browns and some pick your teams of some product this year now that Baker is there. It's a weird feeling. Well, that, that's the beauty of the draft the, for any sport, any team. One draft can turn the fortunes of a team around, you know, or, or at least the perception of a team around. If Baker Mayfield turns out to be, listen, let's say whatever you, however anyone feels about Baker Mayfield, what if... He has like a, I don't know, a Dak Prescott-ish kind of season. I mean, that'd be huge. That'd be huge. Yeah, my aunt went to Oklahoma, so I have a, I have a soft spot in my heart for that university. There's a, there's a picture of me. Uh, I've told this story before. There's, there's a picture of me at like three or four years old in like a in like a maroon OU sweater that my aunt got me all right next box I gotta keep the momentum up I feel like I'm definitely slowing down Way too many packs in hobby. I like jumbo better. I'm gonna I'm gonna lobby for. I guess we have to do hobby because because there's different parallels. In there. Otherwise, I'd lobby for all jumbo next year. I'll be like, guys, maybe all jumbo next year, maybe. Yeah, he actually did well in that NASCAR break. Yeah, Joe, Joe P really did do well.
Jopey likes the fancy stuff. That's, that's, that's what he's about. Actually, he's a big... Um, he's a big... Uh, we, we talked about this uh, when we met him at the Tops in Arizona, the Tops Industry Conference. He's a big me memorabilia collector. He, he collects a lot of live memorabilia nowadays. I think, I think he does like cards, but more higher end stuff. But I think he... He enjoys collecting a lot of like autographed jerseys, bats, baseballs, cleats, that kind of stuff. All right. Onwards. Can't shuffle those cards properly. This is numbered, I think. It is. Byron Buxton, bottom left-hand corner, 96 out of 150. Old Buxty, I don't know if they call him that, Alex Carmichael, going to Alex and the Twins. Old, old Buck, Buxy, old Buxty. That's what, that's what good, good baseball, good baseball nicknames. Just always end with a Y, right? Unless your name already ends with like a, a Y or a I. Oh, there's our autograph right here. It's Mike Sharwin. Sharwin. Sharian. 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 Sherwin. Sherwin. It's got to be Sherwin, right? It's a fancy way to spend. This guy's my birthday. Read an article on him, how he, uh, this goes to the Red Sox, Tim Haynes. Tim, I read an article about him that where he plays saxophone and piano, like a jazz guy. So, and he has a high strikeout per nine rate. So the ladies must love him. He's like, yeah, I'm a musician and a ball player. Come on, everyone's just like. Sure, he does fine with the ladies. Yeah, Andy's like, I need to get me some memorabilia soon. I wish there were more. I want to see more of those. I want to see more of those like leaf breaks. You know what I mean? Or those tri-star breaks. Where you can chase kind of memor like live memorabilia like that. Out of four ninety nine, Christian Pash for the Bravos. That's another big name for the Braves coming up the ranks. There's Bellinger. You know, if you have a chance, Andy, or anybody really, got to go to the National. I, I, for anybody who's into the hobby, um, for anybody who's into the hobby, I would, I would highly recommend going to the National at least, at least once. Um, it is pretty, it is pretty overwhelming and pretty amazing at the same time. A lot of eye candy, just a lot of great old memorabilia. Cause you got like old school card shop guys that you know that buy spaces and set up their booths there for the week, and there's just a there's just a ton of stuff there, and I like Rich Eisen's reaction to Baker Mayfield being taken first. Wow. He couldn't believe it.
Alex Fiedo, no Tiger, so that'll also be part of the of the randomizing lot there, purple chrome. All right. One, one, two, three, four boxes to go. You're almost there. I think I think I am on target. We should probably be done with this right at the uh, right at the top of the hour. So thanks for hanging with me, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost done. Rexes can't wait for archives. Oh right, they are gonna have Sandlot autos in there. Except for one guy. Rex, do you know what guy I'm talking about? One guy won't be in that set. I wonder when it when is archives coming out? Will Ferrell, one of the cast members of the Sandlot won't be in there. And I think it's um Um, I'm pretty sure it's um, it's the Benny character, Mike Vitar as Benny the Jet Rodriguez. He, after, I think he was in Mighty Ducks too. A after his acting career, um, after his acting career, he joined the Los Angeles Fire Department. He was with the fire department for a little while. And uh, after, I, I don't know what, it was a kind of a weird story. Um, he was involved in some Halloween incident where he ended up beating a man, like literally half to death. And I'm pretty sure he's in jail now. I don't know what had sparked the, sparked that, that fight, but 77 out of 125, Jaron Kendall. But I'm pretty sure that he will not be, unless they have old autos, old sticker autos of him laying around. I don't think he's going to be in the set. And I, th I think it was like a, just like a misunderstanding. There's like a, I don't know, but it, it was something. It was very weird. I was surprised. Uh, doubtful that the National will go to Texas anytime soon. I think it generally rotates. Nick Solak, 25 out of 25, orange paper for the Yankees, Alex Carmichael. It generally rotates between Cleveland, Chicago, Lank City. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they might extend out to, um, uh, sometimes they might extend out to, whatchamacallit, Baltimore, but that's about it. I think that I think that is correct. Eighty nine out of two fifty, Jen Ho Seng. Well, nothing's nothing's too far too expensive. GCL, if you save up for it, save enough over time. You can actually do that pretty like the tickets to enter the the uh, the the national are really cheap. It's really just airfare. I mean, you can find flights pretty 
pretty inexpensive flights if you plan out far enough ahead. You don't have to stay the whole week, a few nights. Probably find like a find a inexpensive hotel or a Airbnb. You'd be surprised at how cheap it actually is. It just requires a little more planning, that's the hassle. Have we seen? Oh, we have, there's the autograph right there. Oh, that's a nice one too. You know what? Gabriel was saying this earlier. You know, Kyber Ruiz. That's a guy. That's I. That might be a guy. I would. I don't know. I like. I like the catcher position. I feel like. You know, it's a cerebral position. I kind of like that. It's been, it's been a good tradition of Dodgers catchers as well. If I were PCing a guy, future Dodger, that might be that might be a guy. You've been told don't bother going under five thousand dollars. What are they? What are they doing? Are they, are they are they having steak dinners every night? I mean, it depends on how you how you do it I guess you know I mean there's obviously money you, you you would have to save for actually buying of memorabilia if that's what you're into as well but if you were just wandering around and just just soaking it all in and just seeing all the all the sights why not you could you could easily go for just a couple nights you know maybe plan for a particular you know autograph that you want to get for one of the athletes that are there plan a day around that and you can make it a short trip and you can do that for a fraction of that price. I think you can do it on the cheap. That Kybert Ruiz goes to the Dodgers, of course. That's to Mary Lou and my Dodgers. He's going to be a good one, Mary Lou. Right, three boxes to go. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do the whole like VIP pass and stay the whole week and and all that sort of stuff, yeah, it could it could it could definitely get up there. That is that is for sure. But I feel like you if you were just going there for a couple nights just to see it and hang out and just kind of soak in all this all the sights, say hi to guys like me, you know, and other people you may may watch or whatever. Pretty cool. I think that that it, it would you could do it for a fraction of the price, but I think you, you could you could still make it still make it work, and if you're disciplined, try not to buy too much memorabilia. Just dry, huh, Mike Michael G? We saw it was like it's a cool thing though because like I saw Michael G at the Chicago National. Met Rory. I've met Rex at a national couple. Uh, the I think the first time in Chicago, met, met uh, you know, met Rex. I did not charge Rex any special favors or for autos and hugs. My hugs to Rex were free. Uh, Todd, we've met at the national. So. Well, I mean, yeah, if you go, you want to do it right for the, for, you know, for the first time, I guess. But if you're saying, if you're saying, you know, if, if, if budget is an obstacle, I'm saying that there's a way you can do it on the cheap. You can ball on a budget. Ball on a budget. Otherwise, you, otherwise you'll say, you'll always say it'll be too expensive and you'll never go. I want you to go. Everyone should go at least once. That's true. Yeah, he did. Oh, you know what, Michael? I, I totally forgot to, to print out some flyers and send it to you. I keep forgetting about that. If you still, if you still need those.
Well, you just have to be disciplined. You just can't. You can't just can't blow the budget on breaks. All right, next box. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. I'm definitely slowing down a little bit. But we're getting there. No, no, it's all good. I just keep forgetting to. I. I remember every time I come into the store and I see like the stack of flyers or the printouts that we have that we use as flyers. And I go, oh yeah, I gotta send Michael G like a stack of those. And then I forget. Ton, former Mariner, because then we, we start this and then the intro music starts and then I get hyped. Oh my God, Joe's going on air. <laughs> I always forget, and then I remember. So I don't I haven't really forgotten. I just remember again later. Well, yeah, that's the that's the struggle, GCL. Yeah, there because there's so much stuff to buy at the national. Um, every time, every year at the national that we've gone, there's this guy that sells vintage pennants. Um, those old felt pennants, right? Triangle ones. And I'm always like, I'm always, I always go there and be like, you know what? I feel like I could be a pennant guy, you know, frame up an old vintage pennant real nice, you know, and like be, be pennant guy, and collect some of, that, some of that stuff. And then they're always really expensive. <laughs> and, then, and then you have to, you have to like, I have to buy like another suitcase for it because you can't really like fold them up and put, toss them into your suitcase. They're vintage pennants, right? Sam Hilliard, 250, purple paper. That goes to the Rockies, of course. Rex with the Rocks. Yeah, the, the silver pack stuff is fun. Yeah, there's a lot to do. It, it is like, a, yeah, you're right, John. It is like a like a grown man's Chuck E. Cheese because there's so many fun things happening there. There's a lot of great stuff for the, uh, for the kids as well. All the uh, box buying and then all the big companies do like wrapper redemptions where you, you know, where you can get other bonus stuff by bringing some stuff back. There's Sean Murphy for the Oakland Athletics. That'll go to Tim Haynes. All right, so there's our third to last autograph. Sam Howard, another Rocky for Rex, as 98 out of 125. Yeah, the silver packs there are pretty great at the National. National is pretty fun. All the all the big time, all, always have big promos going on. All right, second to last box. Good luck, everybody. I'll be honest with you, folks. This uh, this draft has got me kind of pumped up. It hasn't gotten old for me yet, because now I'm like thinking about, oh man, think of all the old, all the uh, 2018 football product that we're gonna get this year, you know? 
and all the debates we'll have about this guy is going to make it, this guy is going to be a bust, who's going to be, like, who's going to be, like, the big value, you know? Like, I think that's got to be, you know, who's going to, I mean, like, the top QBs and stuff are generally going to sell pretty well regardless of whether they start or not, but there's always some random dude. Like, where was, I got to look, I got to, sorry, I got to give me Take a quick 10 second breather here. Like Kareem Hunt was picked in round three. He was picked in the third round. Like no one knew what that guy was all about. You know what I mean? Not, not many people did. You know, so like there's always someone in like the second, third, fourth, fifth round or something like that, that'll, you know, that'll come out of nowhere to become like the guy. So it's pretty exciting to think about, you know. No, hey, I feel you GCL. Yeah, it, it is, it is tough. I get it, man. Uh, yeah, opening at TriStar was cool. Yeah, there's a lot of, as a breaker going there, a lot of times some of the big card companies will have you do a live break, uh, a break live at their booth. I think some of you may remember us doing some stuff at the Topps booth, at Panini. At, uh, uh, at TriStar. All, always fun to do stuff like that. I think there was an 86, 87 Fleer bat. Wasn't there a, a big vintage break for that? There's Sam Hilliard. Don't look, Gabriel. Sorry. Ah, oh, he's here. Don't look, Gabriel. No, don't look. It's too late. This goes to Rex and the Rockies. Sam Hilliard, purple chrome autograph, 182 out of 250. That's exactly what Gabe was looking for. I'm sure Rex will move it to you for a good price, Gabe. That's, an, that's orange, yeah. 10 out of 25, Bowman trending, AJ Puck. That's a nice one for Tim Haynes and the A's. The little big unit, I think, is what they call him. Maybe they don't call him that, but he, he kind of has that kind of size. Tommy John, though, that's the unfortunate thing, but he'll be back. Right, yeah, that 86-87 that Fleer break was like 2,000 a pack. Yeah, Gabe saying that he that, that's about 250 to 300 right there. Gabe's been that's that's actually the one Gabe was looking for, so I think he's been tracking that price pretty carefully. All right, seventy-seven out of one fifty, Drew Ellis. Oh no, you're looking for Colton Welker. That's right, my bad. Paul writes, says, I'm the Chris Bryant of rap music. I don't, I don't know what that, what, what does that mean? You strike out a lot? A lot of strikeouts for Chris Bryant. Yeah, that vintage break was pretty was pretty crazy.
And if one of those Jordans, right, Michael, if one of those Jordans turned into like a, a – that could grade into – Eight and a half, nine, or something like that. You know, you know, all of a sudden you're talking about. There's Juan Soto. Put that there. Oh yeah, we were talking about round. I think it was, was it Andy. Maybe we were talking about rounders the other night. Maybe it was with Joe Cavanaugh or Andy Garner, somebody. At a two fifty. Need you in con. All right, fair enough. Paul writes. So I didn't know they gave those awards out for 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 uh, for rapping. Anyhow, um, I gotta see rounders again. I hear it's pretty good. Does it hold up? You said it's a great poker. Does it does it hold up over time, John? I feel like it does. Young Matt Damon. Well, who else is in there? Yeah, who is who is Teddy KGB? That was a. Uh, why am I blanking on his name? But that guy, <laughs> isn't it? Nineteen out of one twenty-five. That's uh, Miguel Angel Sierra. Miguel Angel Sierra for the Strohs. That'll go to. The Stroh's Diamondbacks combo, Hiller with that one. Paul, thoughts on Panini brand? Well, you gotta be more specific than that. With just the brand in general? It's nice. <laughs> oh, I see, I see, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. I need, I need context, Paul. You see them everywhere, but I came up on Upper Deck and Top, starting to get back into cards. Uh, yeah, Panini, you know, is the is the new kid on the block. Obviously, they I don't know when did they guys when did Panini really make the entrance into the United States? What year is it? Maybe almost early two thousand tens, around maybe eight, seven, eight years ago, something like that. But the Panini used to be, they, they have, Panini has a uh, collectible pedigree. So in Europe and other parts of the world, all, all the kids like us here in America, we they know Panini as the sticker book company. So they used to have old, old books where you could literally buy stickers of old soccer players and then you could put them into books and whatnot. You know what I mean? So... So they they have like hobby pedigree. So they they I think whatever their parent company is got you know wanted to make a real big splash in the United States and started buying up old old uh, dead brands and or dying brands you know like Donners and whatnot and you know and they just started really reinvesting into into the hobby and in a way I think kickstarted. Um, Kickstarted a lot of what we can end up doing, like high-end releases that 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 work well with uh, live group case breaking. But yeah, well, there's a lot of licensing stuff that goes on now. So, and a lot of companies kind of are angling themselves into having one specific license or another. Like Upper Deck, it's pretty much all hockey now. All they do is hockey. So they've got some exclusive rights to the to the Players Association. And the league license, and I think it's mostly exclusive, so no one else really does hockey. Same with Panini. Panini has cornered the market on uh, on uh, on NBA and NFL licensing, so they they paid extra money to get exclusive licensing on that. So they're they're mostly doing that, and Top still has the big license with baseball. Um, so Panini will still produce baseball, but a lot of people will complain that for Panini. They can't use the team names or their logos, right? So this card would just say Baltimore on it. So that bothers some people. Some people, uh, to me, it's not that big of a deal, but it, it can bother some people. But Panini will still release some baseball stuff too. But Topps is mostly uh, the guys, in, still, still the guys in baseball.
They used to do football up until 2014 or 15. Until they got until that license got purchased out from them. But what's crazy is that A, Paul writes, it's a lot more expensive than when we were collecting as kids. And B, there's a, a ton more stuff. Just a ton more stuff. There's like 30 baseball releases a year. There's like 30 football releases a year. There's like, you know, 25 basketball releases a year. 15 to 20 hockey releases a year. So it's it's kind of a lot to, it's a lot to digest. What's good, what's bad, what's best to get into. It's, it, it's pretty tough. There's Kyber Ruiz for my Dodgers. Great Dodger prospect. This goes out to Mary Lou for the Dodgers. Got the refractor now. 62 out of 4.99 on that one, Mary Lou. But um, here, I will. Here's a video. Or if you look on the main page of our our uh, our YouTube page, Paul, and anybody else who's watching, Goosh, what's going on, man? Watch that what's a group break video, and that'll kind of give you some of the info. Info there is um, is um, is out of date. The some of the text, but the basic concept. And the changes in the hobby are uh, are all there. That'll be a fun video to watch. But yeah, a lot has changed. There's a you know, it's the same. It's the same sort of deal. You know, we buy a five dollar pack back in the day. Not necessarily five dollars of value in there. But these days, with the kind of group breaks that we do, just some more zeros added to the added to the back of that. So the stakes are a little bit higher, but the concept is basically is basically the same. It's fun though. There's a lot of interesting things, a lot to learn. There's a big learning curve. So there's a lot to learn about different products and why certain products are themed a certain way, why certain people like certain products more. Some products may have more value than other pro or secondary value. More than that, if you're getting back into collecting, then it's like, hey, you know, do you want to collect just for just to personally collect or do you want to collect because you're trying to make a profit off of it or you're trying to flip it for something else, you know? So there's a larger variety of ways you can enjoy the hobby now too. Jordan Humphreys, Orange Shimmer, 13 out of 25. So, well, welcome back to the hobby. So be prepared to, to be overwhelmed by a ton of information. It's fun though. Hey, at least for me, if you like sports, and that's what we like here. If you like sports, you're gonna you're gonna enjoy. It's not gonna be too hard to get back into stuff like this. I think that's really the the common thread here at Jaspie's Hobbyland is that hey, at the end of the day, we're all big sports fans, and it just bleeds over into cardboard like this. This is why we do it. All right, so that was our last auto, that Kyber Ruiz. So let's see if there's any other low number parallels. Austin Voth to 499. I think one other piece of advice, not only for Paul Wrights, but for everybody, is uh, I guess don't let anyone else tell you how to collect. You know what I mean? Some people will be like, "Oh, that product sucks," but why? Why does it suck? To them, it might, you know. So don't 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 let anyone dictate how you how you enjoy the hobby, because everyone will have different opinions on what's quote unquote good or bad. All right, almost at the end. Thanks very much, everybody. Random Team 3 in the books. Uh, right around the time we usually end the broadcast, too. Still have some work to do after this, but I'm glad we got this fit in. Excellent. Done. We made it. Hour and 23 minutes. Not as fast as I want it to be, but the hobby, the hobby case can be a little bit of a, a little more of a challenge. There's a better groove to the jumbo boxes, but anyhow, 
We made it. There you go. Still fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, that's, I appreciate that the most. In a long break like this, hanging out with me. Uh, Kyber Ruiz, Refractor Autograph to four ninety nine, Mr. X. All right, so let's go back to random.org. Let's get the list. Let's get some new dice. Let's get everyone's names from Hiller down to Michael Gabai. Name on top after 202 two for the hard way. After four times, we'll get those extra cards. One, two, three, and four. That'll be John Ryder. I don't think I called your name out enough in this break, John. So here are some, a few extra bonus cards coming your way. Thanks for getting in, man, including this orange Evan White. I like those orange parallels, 15 out of 25. And um, any other non-represented team. So any other Indians, Tigers, Mariners, and Rangers cards that we may have that may, like Chrome cards that should ship, that are, but that are not numbered will also go to you. Um, that's it, folks. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.